Good morning, Life Church. Hey, we're so glad you're here worshiping with us. Hey, we're going to sing to the Lord. We'd love if you join us. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great. Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Here we go. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. Searching 
as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love La, la, la Lord, good, good Father See who you are See who you are See who you are And I'm loved by you See who I am See who I am See who I am You're good, good Father See who you are See who you are See you are, and I'm loved by you. So I am, so I am, so I am.
You know, the scriptures tell us that there is resurrection power in the name of Jesus. And that same power lives within us. I think it's so relevant that that song mentions the word defeat. Because there are situations in our life where we feel defeated. Our family situation, our finances, anything that makes you feel defeated, but the hope that is in Jesus is that by the Spirit of Christ, we can rise from the ashes of defeat. This is the gospel that although we are down in the dirt, although there is nothing that we can do in and of ourselves, that the Spirit of Christ raises us up from the ashes of defeat and brings us to the throne of God where he views us as righteousness through the blood of Jesus. Father, we lift you up this morning. What a great Father you are to us. That you would look at creation, you would look at your people with such a plan saying, I want that man, I want that woman in my family. And you sent your son to die on that cross so that through him we may obtain life with you. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to this truth and allow our lives to reflect it that we may stand at the gates of hell and bring people into eternal life with you, Jesus. We commit this service to you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. Thanks for joining. <laughs> what was that? Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you're making me laugh. Yeah, church, welcome. We're got glad you're here. I got okay. it. Welcome, Life Church. Thanks for joining our live stream. We have a few announcements we're going to. <laughs> hey, Life Church. Thanks for joining our live stream today. We have a few announcements for you. First is that we are going to be continuing our live stream services um, through the month of April. And then for any other um, updates, you can check out our website. You can follow us on Facebook and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can text the word loop on the number on the screen to get more connected.
How we've been away, I know it's been hard for people to give, so we have some options available to you. You can give online, or you can send your tie to the church address that will be listed below. For families with kids, uh, there is a link with a video on our website that you can go ahead and log into for your kids to watch during the message. If you have any prayer requests during the sermon, text the word prayer to the number on the screen and Pastor Shannon will pray with you. Now let's welcome Pastor Shannon. Good morning, Life Church. Man, what a, uh, what a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, wonderful day today. Glad to be in your living rooms uh, together. Hey, if you haven't heard, I'm pretty sure you've heard now, that the governor has um, uh, allowed uh, places of worship to begin having service again. You probably heard the video or saw the video that I put out on Friday uh, that kind of explains a little bit what's going on. Uh, if you haven't, go back and watch that video. Go to our website, and uh, all the information is there on our website, the guidelines, service times, uh, when we are getting back together here at the church. So go check all that out. Uh, so, but for those of you who have not seen that, I'll let you know that the first day back for us here at Life Church after prayer, after meeting with our team, uh, leadership team here, uh, we will begin services here at the church again beginning June the 21st, June the 21st uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, so there you have it. So I know you're probably excited. Uh, but there's a lot more information coming out, and I will keep you guys updated as well. If you have your Bibles this morning, why don't you go ahead and open up to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John. Last week, uh, we talked about um, the Sermon on the Mount, one of the greatest sermons that Jesus had ever preached was the Sermon on the Mount. As we read that, uh, that passage, the, the multitudes of people came and, and really followed Jesus you know, pretty much everywhere he went. And there were reasons why the multitudes came. They came because they wanted to hear the words that Jesus was teaching and his parables he was telling. But they also came because of the miracles. And I'm going to ask you the question this morning, are you ready for God to do a miracle in your life? That's the title of our message today. But miracles really brought the crowds of people to Jesus everywhere he went. Through his supernatural miracles, Jesus, he revealed his, his compassion, his authority, his power, and, and his desire to see you and I live a life that's filled with the power of Jesus. In other words, Jesus working, the Holy Spirit working in our life. He was compelled by love. Jesus, I mean, he loved those who came. And I know throughout the Bible you'll read of the different miracles, but one place it says that he went about teaching and healing all who were sick and oppressed. Jesus did some wonderful, wonderful miracles. But he had this compassion for all. And Jesus, he restored the sight to the blind. He, he gave hearing to the deaf. He gave speech to the mute. He would heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, he removed every disease and disability. He even calmed the storm, cast out demons, and even raised the dead. That's our Jesus. And let me tell you something, he has not stopped doing that today. But he made it very clear that everything is possible with God. No wonder in Matthew chapter 9, people were saying, hey, we've never seen anything like this before. Nothing like this has ever been seen. You see, in the Gospels, there are recorded 37 miracles that Jesus performed. And one of the most familiar miracles that he performed was the feeding of the 5,000. So if you have your Bibles, I want to read that story this morning because of all the miracles that we read about, this is the one with the exception of the, the resurrection, along with the resurrection all four Gospels mention this particular miracle. And I want to read it this morning because I believe that if, as we look at this miracle, I believe that it will begin to speak to us into our life. John chapter 6, we're going to begin in verse 1. So if you've got your Bibles there, you can read along. If not, it will be on the screen. It said, After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him. Just like at the Sermon on the Mount, we see a crowd following Jesus because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. So Jesus went up to the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. 
It says in verse 4, Now the Passover and the feast of the Jews was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing the large crowd, he was coming toward him. Jesus said to Philip, Where are they to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to even get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. What are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves and When he had given things, he distributed that to those who were seated, and also with the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered up them and filled twelve baskets of fragments with the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. Father, we thank you today for your word Our prayer this morning where we are is that the Holy Spirit would be right there in our living rooms, right here in this building today, that you would anoint the word as we bring forth the word. Let it change our hearts and our minds. Let us draw us closer to you, our Lord and our Savior. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful miracle. This is what I like to call the supernatural buffet. I mean, there was so much food that was there. But what happens is you read deep into this, there's so much about the power and the authority of Jesus and his heart for you and me. And that's what this story tells us. Let me uh, show you a couple of things that sort of jump out in this, this parable, this story, this morning, this, this passage, this reading. First, it reveals that Jesus already knows your need. For many of us, there are needs in our life. But I want you to know that Jesus already knows what you need. In verse 5 of the story we just read, it says, Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that the people may eat? He already knew the need. You see, twice in this passage, John, as he writes, it uses the word large to describe the crowd. We know that there were 5,000 men because the Scriptures tells us that the men sat down and it was the 5,000. But we can assume that there were also women and children there too. And if we assume that, maybe a conservative estimate would have been about 12,000 people all together. And that's a big group of people, a large number of people, especially to, to feed all at once. I know at the Air Force Academy where my son attends, they feed 4,000 students, cadets, all at one time, and it's a sight to see. Can you imagine 12,000 people sitting down in the grass and Jesus feeding them at one time? You see, Jesus wasn't alarmed. He wasn't surprised at the number of people that were there. In fact, he was prepared. He was prepared uh, for them, and he traveled up to the mountainside so that he could see them, just to make space for everyone to sit around. He knew what was about to happen. You see, but if you look at the perspective of the disciples, they were a little intimidated. But I want you to know something, that Jesus was at perfect peace. Jesus is fully aware of the need that was right in front of them. Maybe today where you're at, maybe you feel like the disciples. Maybe there are difficulties in your life that seem too big for you, and they probably are. Maybe you have become so overwhelmed with the size of the problem that you've forgotten that Jesus is with you. You see, the enemy, Satan, he always wants you to to focus on the size of your problem so that you'll be intimidated, that you'll be discouraged and to take your eyes off of Jesus. Let me tell you something. No matter what issue that you have when you sat down to be part of the service there in your home this morning, None of your issues, none of your problems, not even the sides of the issues that are in front of you caught Jesus by surprise. You see, he already knows your need. He sees your broken marriage. He has memorized your medical charts. He knows the balance of your bank account. 
He knows your battle with anxiety. He knows your battle with depression. He sees your struggles with addictions. He is fully aware of your teenager's lifestyle. Jesus knows everything. And he hasn't intimidated by any of it. Jesus already knows your need. Second, this encounter that we read shows us that Jesus already has the answer. In verse 6 of our story, he said this to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. You see, the disciples, they're, they're scrambling to figure out how they're going to pull off this impossible feat. How are we going to feed all these pe- people? I mean, you couldn't call up the local pizza place and have pizza delivered for 12,000 people. There's no grub hub to call. See, here's the problem. The problem is with the disciples that they're focusing on the number of people in the crowd. And they're forgetting about the one who is standing beside them. See, they're trying to scrape ingredients together while the bread of life has already met their need. Verse 8, one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? See, he's looking at the size of the problem. And Jesus says, Had the people sit down and you continue that story. He says, He took the loaves and when he distributed it, he gave to those who were seated the fish as well. You see, Jesus already has the answer to your problem. Jesus already has everything that you need. You see, Jesus is able to take your life. He's able to take your circumstance, circumstances and to make a miracle. He wants to take your circumstances. He wants to do a miracle in your life. That's how he took a boy's sack lunch and transformed it into a feast. Everyone was fed as much as they wanted But see, that's not all to the story. When they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. It says, so they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets of fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. You see, Jesus already knows your need. Jesus already has the answer. And his answer is always more than enough. And thirdly, what really stands out in this story, I want you to grab this morning, is Jesus uses those who are ready. See, my question is, are you looking at the size of your circumstances instead of focusing on Jesus? Do you not know that Jesus is ready to meet that need with more than enough? But he wants to know that you're ready. In verse 9 Look who God uses. Look in this story. You see, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? I'm sure that the boy was just as shocked as anyone to witness what happens when you and I, right, give Jesus everything that we have. You see, he brought two fish. He brought five loaves. And Jesus took everything he had and performed a miracle. You see, you and I are the ones God chooses to share the hope for the world. And I'm telling you right now, we need hope. Right now in our world, we are called as the church to help bring in hope to those who need it. That's what Jesus does. You see, we make ourselves ready by offering him our time, by giving him our talent, our treasures, We're giving Jesus the opportunity to supernaturally multiply our lives, to multiply our resources to meet the needs of those around us in our church, our community, and even into the world. Culture wants to convince us to live a closed-fisted and store everything up for ourselves. But Jesus shows us that when we give all that we have to him, no matter how much it may be, I'm even reminded the little widow who gave all that she had. And Jesus says, this is the one who was given the most. 
I want to tell you a personal story. I know many of you who have attended Life Church know this story of it. I think it was fitting to sort of tell it again because I want you to know that you need to put your trust in Jesus and be obedient to when God speaks. There was a time when my wife and I were in the military. I was in the military. She was along for the ride, but we were both in the military. Um, it was a time where we were moving from one place to another and we had saved up enough money to, to make that transition from overseas back to the States. I remember one day the Lord was speaking to me. I was sitting in the car. I was just praying and the Lord spoke to me and told me to give a certain amount of money away to someone in need. You know me, I just, okay, Lord, that's what you want me to do. Then, then I'll do it because I trust you and spoke to my wife and we went around a little bit on it but finally agreed and so we did what the God told us to do. The night before we're getting ready to the PCS, we actually have no money because the money we gave away was the money that we we're going to use to to move back to the United States. And so that night before, we're in our hotel room getting ready to catch a flight the next day with nothing much in our bank account. And we family comes over just to say bye. A family we knew while we were there, and they knocked on the door. They came in and. We ate together and just shared some time together and was looking forward to when we'd get together again after we left. But time went on and the night got long and their kids were asleep and on the couch. And the husband says, hey, you know, is there anything you guys need? Because the Lord told us to come here tonight and not to leave until he said leave. Now you can see this beginning to work out. God's about to give and perform a miracle in our life. We waited and waited. He, kept, he finally started asking a lot of questions. And, you know, we, we allowed our pride to step in. But the, the miracle of that story is, see, God used this person, this family, to bless us because we in turn had blessed someone else out of obedience. God was multiplying. And the money that we gave away was returned to us and more. God did a miracle. God wants to do a miracle in your life. God wants to do a miracle in all of our lives. You see, Matthew chapter 19, it says, Jesus looked at them and look at the words that Jesus says. He says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Listen, God already knows. Jesus knows your need. Jesus is ready to meet your need. Jesus is ready to do a miracle in your life. All you have to do is get your eyes off of the size of the problem and put your eyes on Jesus who is standing right there. He said he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. Just give it all. Give your hurts, give your pain, give your circumstances, your financial situation. Lay it down at the feet of Jesus and let him do a miracle in your life. I want to pray for you this morning and before and after I pray, just want to kind of share just a little bit more about opening up our church. But where you are, if you're in need of a miracle today, just bow your head where you're at. And if you're there with a group of people, just grab their hand and, and let me just pray for you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the need that you have. Think about that miracle you need. And I want to see what you to see yourself laying it down at Jesus' feet and allowing him to do that miracle in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that there are so many of us this morning who have needs in our life that relationships are falling apart. Maybe it's work. Maybe there's no more job or finances. Maybe someone there is dealing with addiction. Maybe someone is dealing with health issues, a marriage relationship. Whatever it may be, I pray this morning that they would be willing to get their eyes off of the circumstance and put their eyes upon Jesus to lay that need at your feet, Jesus, and let you begin to do a miracle in their life. With man, Jesus says, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So just to, to recap one more time, if you need prayer, just uh, text prayer to the word to the number there on your screen. 
I want to encourage you to, if you didn't see the video that we put out on Friday, go back, look at that video. Um, and it just explains a lot of what we're, what we're doing and preparing to move forward. June 21st will be the Sunday that we will open up our doors and begin having services here uh, in the building here in this church with guidelines. The reason that we're doing that with guidelines and a certain number of people and, and you can see all the guidelines is because we want to move out of love. Jesus told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. We want to show love to everyone. So we are going to move forward. We're going to move forward with some guidelines that have been given to us. We're going to show our respect to our community. We're not just going to jump in blindly. The leadership team here at Life Church has been putting a lot of time, a lot of energy into figuring out what's it going to look like. Look, I want you to know that church is going to look different, but Jesus Christ is the same. He hasn't changed. It may look different here in this building, but the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it's the same spirit that will be right here. Maybe you're there and you say, hey, I, I'm not sure I want to come back in on the building on the 21st. It's okay. You can continue to watch our services on live stream. We're going to keep live streaming our services. This is, this is going to be another option as part of who we are as a church from this point out. Go to our webpage lifechurchma.org. There will be a button there that, that gives you all the information about reopening our church. Uh, read all that information. I want you to know I love you. I cannot wait to see you guys. Have a blessed week and enjoy, uh, enjoy the weekend. God bless you.